Barbell squats, barbell deadlifts, barbell overhead presses. Are they overrated? Watch this. Our first caller is Casey from Texas. Hey, Casey, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. So my biggest pet peeve is people that I follow uh, who contradict themselves on advice that I'm trying to uh, gain from them. And so, you know, I came into this whole thing through Mike Matthews, and then he introduced me to you guys. And then I actually hired a coach one-on-one. And he isn't crazy. In fact, he doesn't program at all the compound lifts, like the big ones, military press, bench, squat, and deadlift. And then, you know, I heard you guys talk about how important they were. And then, you know, you had Mike Matthews on and you both were on the compound lift thing. And so I was wondering if I could just read you this coach's opinion and get your direct feedback. Yeah, sure. (laughs) Yeah, go for it. Go. (laughs) Okay. So look. It's not too long. Right when it feels too long, it ends. I promise. (laughs) All right. So I'm not against programming bench, uh, but squat deadlift are quite poor from a hypertrophy standpoint. Far superior options out there place a more direct stimulus on the target muscles without causing a massive disruption like squats and deadlifts. You could stop there. I only directly program them if the client is A, limited on equipment, B, insists on the list. Three, the focus is more on increasing overall strength in the list. Beyond that, I don't see the direct need when you could do a hack squat over a squat or a straight-legged deadlift over conventional deadlift. Those could be considered compounds, but the direct stimulus and fatigue one will experience is much different. Also hesitant on form and technique. They're quite technical, but could also turn into an ego lift. I've had quite a few clients who were persistent that they knew how to execute the lift properly, but ended up getting injured, had to take multiple weeks off. Reason why I try to program dumbbell pressing more than regular bench is because of the range of motion. I think a lot of people get stuck on the idea that you have to squat bench deadlift to get a decent physique. This is far from the truth. I personally haven't deadlifted in two plus years, haven't done a barbell back squat in one and a half years. Legs are still growing, getting stronger. Stimulus is just poor on them. And there's no way I can get under a squat bar for 10 to 20 reps or do a deadlift for that amount of reps. Yeah, Casey, so yeah. You, you literally could have stopped after two sentences. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I tried to interrupt you. Go, I already know where this yeah. guy's going right. so, okay. to go. Yeah, this is one of the, first off, he's, uh, I don't know who he is, so I don't know his name or, you know, whatever, but I can tell you right now he's an idiot. So <laughs> so here's the deal. There's uh, People will look at exercise from a few different ways, and one of them is just the pure hypertrophy standpoint, just muscle building. We don't care about function. We don't care about carryover. We don't care about anything but just. We don't care about learning curve. Yeah, we're just about just we about hard things. Hypertrophy. Okay. For, now, now, if we're just going to argue hypertrophy, I could still make the argument that uh, free weight exercises can outperform a lot of these machine exercises. But even if they were equal, here's where the free weights win. In real life, uh, there's very few leg presses that you're going to do, but you're going to be doing a lot of squatting. There's very little, um, you know, uh, machine rows you're going to do, but there's going to be a lot of barbell type row or deadlifts. You're not going to be doing a machine press in real life. You'll be doing something where you're pressing something over your head. So the carryover to real life is much higher. And the and as far as uh, and he says I didn't lift. I haven't done these exercises for a year and a half or two years. I bet he did a lot of them when he first started. I bet that's what happened. And once you work out for years and years and years and years, you can get away from a muscle building standpoint to not doing. But I will say this: you will lose this skill and the ability of doing those exercises. I bet if he got under a bar to try to squat his squat now would look terrible or he could potentially uh, injure himself. So yeah, I guess if you're just looking from a stimulate the muscle on its own standpoint, maybe there's, there's equivalency. They're not superior, No, but, no. and I say maybe because I can hear the arguments, but you know, what's funny is that even the best muscle building bodybuilders of all time will tell you the value of free weight exercises. People like Ronnie Coleman, Dorian Yates, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Lavroni, like people who've built, you know, massive physiques, but I don't like to point to bodybuilders all the time because that's such an extreme, you know, endeavor. It would be like pointing to any extreme endeavor in physical athletics and, and trying to get their, you know, specific advice. The average person wants to build a lot of muscle, but would like to also be strong in the real world. And it's not a trade-off. It we're, really isn't a trade-off. We're, we're also, we're also, you're not even addressing, uh, yes, it is better for hypertrophy and I'll make that case for all day long. Okay. Okay, Casey, have you ever have you ever done a a new lift that you've never done before, or do you remember when you first started lifting weights and how much your body responded because it was a new stimulus? It was the first time. Do you remember that that feeling? Yeah, of course. Okay, 
So you do something like that, and that and what that is is that that's that the it's a novel it's a novel stimulus, and your body has to adapt to it. It's new stimulus, and it goes oh, and it and it and muscle builds. Okay, you do exercises like a leg extension, leg press, hack squat. The body adapts to that really quick and easy because it's fucking easy to do. So you do get benefits from it. You do build some muscle. And then that the curve of the learning curve of it starts to taper down and the adaptation process and the benefits start to diminish. The beautiful thing about very high complex movements like the squat, like the deadlift, like the overhead press is it has a long learning curve. And guess what? A long learning curve also equals a longer process of adaptation, which means over time, more muscle. When they do these studies for these knuckleheads that to argue the hypertrophy argument is they're looking at a six week study that shows which one stimulates the muscle on an e-stim machine. Oh, the hack squat fires the quads as much or more than the squat does in a six week setting. But when you look over the course of somebody who trained for two years straight and we took one guy who did nothing but hack squats and another guy who did squats, I guarantee the guy who did squats and not the hack squats versus the guy who did the hack squats and didn't do the squats will have seen more muscle over the course of those two yeah. years. You know, the irony I'll too, take that bet all day long. And the irony about the ego lift, first off, uh, here's the irony of that. I've seen more ego lifting on leg presses, yeah. hack yeah. squats, <laughs> machines than I've ever seen with free weights. You know, I, I've seen people stack the weights on a leg press and do like a two inch, you know, leg press or whatever. So that's funny to me. Um, right. Injury risk, it can be high on any exercise. Of course, the more complex an exercise is, the more careful you need to be with your form and technique. That's what makes it high value. But man, the, the value. The, but man, the okay. carryover is just so, through the roof. Yeah. So you were talking about functionality versus just muscle growth. And you said, well, I could see the argument of hypertrophy being almost equal. What if your only goal is aesthetics? And no, you're talking about no, it. I we asked the bodybuilder. I disagree. And I know, Adam, you were a, yeah. a pro bodybuilder. But if you ask those guys, I'm like, those are the guys I kind of want to ask. Okay, so, and if they say, yeah, leg press, all that, then why wouldn't I go with that as well? Okay, so I disagree with that, what Sal said. Yeah, by the way, is, I said maybe. Yeah, and and the reason not. why I said maybe is that's the only argument that they make that I can kind of see the logic. Everything else they say is- what a, Let me tell you ridiculous. something. What am I, and of course, this is my personal experience. Okay, I do not think I have a the genetics to be a bodybuilder. I, I got into that space just to prove that I could build that physique. And I went from amateur to pro with no coach, nobody else, no team, no nothing. And I tell you, one of the things that I think was one of my biggest advantages when I looked at my, because I worked out at a gym where there was probably- 10 to 15 pros at all times were in there. So it was a really cool environment, right? There's a lot, this was in NorCal. I, I worked out at what you would consider like the, um, what's the, the LA one that Gold's it, gym. Yes. So I, that Venice. was, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I had the, the Venice of NorCal, all of us, a bunch of pros and amateurs, a bunch of bodybuilders in there, all of them, which are my friends, all of them, didn't do the movements like squatting and deadlifting and they all trained the machines and cables and trained the pump all the time. I think the reason why my my physique exploded was because I was the guy that was doing that stuff. I thought that was my advantage. My And when I looked at the way they were training, I thought, oh, this is crazy. They're still training all these weak ass movements, chasing the pump all the time. They're missing out on the benefits of training like a power lifter, of training singles, doubles, triples, and getting hitting heavy weight. Now you don't stay there forever because it's important that you phase out of that type of training. That training is tremendous value for your central nervous system and packing on some serious muscle. So these guys that, yes, you could build a physique by, I had a decent physique before I started competing, but it wasn't anything was like a cap to it. Oh, there was a cap to it. Yeah. yeah that's and, the thing. Mm -hmm. There's this huge systemic effect to these compound lifts that you, they don't consider in terms of like muscle building. So you get a much louder signal, which then, you know, you're going to build this base of muscle like you wouldn't build otherwise if you're just yeah. completely focused on hypertrophy. So yeah, what's so funny, what's funny I to think me too. One, one of the big problems was the fatigue to simulation ratio. I've never really experienced that myself where I go, oh my gosh, I'm so fatigued. I need a deload week. So I don't know. But then I think the other thing was that hypertrophy reps can be from four to 30, right? And so you, Adam, were talking about the different stimulus, right? The different stimuli. Change it up. But what if you're not able to change it up to those higher reps with a big compound list? Are you taking something away there? Or do you do 30 deadlifts? Yeah. Well, well why wouldn't you be able to? Yeah. You, yeah. I mean, do you program 30 deadlifts? Wouldn't that be kind of like a cardio exercise? At well, that point? I, 30 I, I is a lot. 20, 20 though. Yeah, I typically don't program yeah. anything over 20 reps. 20, 20 reps is 20 reps is, okay. more, is more than And enough. you don't think that's really out of the question or, or strange to be 
doing 20 deadlifts? Uh, no. no, it's hard. You're going to have to go real light. Yeah. And I do, I do prefer deadlifts in the one to, you know, maybe 12 rep range. Depends right. on the exercise. Some exercises do better with lower reps and, and others with higher reps. Like I don't like to do, you know, rep, sets of two reps with laterals, right? Side laterals. I'm not going to do sets of two, but I'll do that with deadlifts. So it depends on the exercise, but no, you can go up to. And by the way, it doesn't reps. mean that neither one of those don't build some muscle. Two reps of lateral raises could build muscle. Yeah, it's just so, the technique is. But really there tough. are certain exercises that lend themselves better with higher rep versus lower rep. Deadlifting happens to be one of those things. I will go all the way up to. I just did, actually just talked on the podcast to the guys. I went all the way down to 135, which for me, I can deadlift over 500 pounds. So 135 is nothing. And I did 20 reps, slow and controlled. It was like just a light day. I was working on technique, the way I pulled off the floor, making sure I was keeping the bar balanced. I love to throw that in there. And I, I am sore as fuck from that because I never do that with deadlifts. So yeah. tremendous value by it, doing it's, that. It's funny when I hear this though, too, because if you look at the just the biggest, strongest people or coaches that coach the biggest, strongest people, and you were to take a consensus, okay? Because you'll get some dissenting views and opinions. But if you take a consensus, it'll be something like 80%. We'll say, yeah, there's tremendous value in the barbell squat and the barbell deadlift and the overhead press. There's tremendous value. Now, in athletics, uh, it's that, that there, it would be 100%. Like, you're not going to get a football coach or strength coach that's going to say, yeah, I have my athletes. I don't have my athletes squat. I have them do uh, leg press. Like, you're not going to see very many football coaches say that that's a good idea. But even in just the building, your physique, uh, you're still going to see a majority. I mean, look at like, uh, who's uh, the Mr. Classic Olympia? C-Bum, right? Yeah. Chris Bump said yeah. right? The guy's yeah. been deadlifting and squatting towards the back half of his career and has completely changed his physique and had well, a lot of that, muscle. Okay, the reason, Casey, the reason why I get so passionate about this conversation is because I was like you. So my whole like teenage 20 and my 20s, I actually loved hearing this information because I hated to squat. I hated the deadlift and I avoided it for my first 10 years of lifting. And I built an okay physique. Like I didn't look bad. Like I look good. Like I had a good physique. And when I actually started to deadlift, squat, overhead press, like that was the core of my routine. Holy fuck did my physique respond. I mean, it responded in like a year or two compared to the 10 years I've been doing hack squats and leg presses. And 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 I liked hearing that as a young 20-year-old kid because squatting was hard. I attempted yeah. it and I remember it was hard. I wasn't good at it. I was frustrated. I was weak. Like, And so when I'd hear these bodybuilder guys be like, you don't need to squat. You don't need to deadlift. Those are, those are extra. And then I'd be like, hell yeah, I wanna, I'll just leg press. I'll just hack squat because I like doing that. It's yeah. easy. And so yeah. I fell into that trap. Of, of closing myself that it's a better way to train because I'm a bodybuilder and I care about aesthetics. I don't, I used, my saying used to be, Justin will say this all the time, right? Mm -hmm. No, all, I'm all show, no all go. Show, no go. I don't yeah. give a shit about how much <laughs> I lift. I don't care about being the strongest guy. I just want to look good. No girl ever asked me when I take my shirt off, how much do you bench? So what do I care about that shit? That was my attitude. And I had a decent physique, but let me tell you, when I started doing those compound lifts and making that my core, Holy yeah. shit, did my physique change. And that awesome. I attribute that to what took me from amateur to pro in such a short period of time is that that was the the, the foundation of my training. And when I looked yeah. at my peers in the space, they just they just neglected that. Yeah, you know the irony That's of this, good. by the way, Casey, another yeah. just another piece of irony with this is you'll almost never hear these, you know, quote unquote coaches, you almost never hear them say, you know, free weight curls are inferior. <laughs> Let's just do machine curls. For some reason, free weights are okay right. for isolation exercises. That'll give you clue. And what, what's the clue here? They just don't like hard work. Yeah. It, they're lazy. Yep. Yeah, squats are hard. Deadlifts are hard. Let's do the easy machine shit. But then when it comes to like curls, yeah, dumbbell curls, barbell curls, those are super awesome. So well, all of a sudden now free weights are okay. Mm -hmm. So, so it, their, their logic is flawed and it's based on, can I do less work because this is hard and I've already built a solid physique and so therefore I can kind of maintain what I'm doing. And it's also, I guess, a counter message these days, which is funny because the, the message was opposite in the past. But now you're seeing people say, oh, free weights are great. So and by the, the way, and that. by the way, the risk reward argument is a fair argument. And it and is definitely something as a coach, I apply it when I'm talking to a seven year old lady. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking to a 36 year old young fit man right now who I'm like, dude, I do not want you to avoid those movements because some dumbass is telling yeah, you yeah, that but even it with, doesn't have as much benefit look, because I, I fell into that trap. And I wish somebody would have like forced me to squat, deadlift, bench, overhead press when I was younger because right. I have no idea where I'd be today if I would have. Yeah, been. but look, I trained a lot of old people too, okay? Yeah, I'm not going to have a 70-year-old lady do a barbell squat, but I'm going to have her do a body weight, sit down, stand up squat. And that's safer than a leg press for her. 
So this whole, like, it's, you, you modify the exercise. There's, there's a million and one different ways to squat and a million and one different ways to do a press. So it doesn't have to be with the barbell on your back, but that's a fundamental human movement. It's very yeah. strange that people You're would advocate. The movement. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Don't train this fundamental human right. movement. Very strange uh, to me. Let's just get the muscles that are uh, that we use with fundamental movements stronger, but let's not practice yeah. the movement as if just getting strong muscles allows you to move well. That's not necessarily well, how Well, you works. stay too long in that, you create dysfunction. Totally. Your, your body doesn't uh, fire the in an ideal way when you actually go to do these types of movements, which sets you up for potential injury down the road. You should so. see, Casey, we have models that come in to film uh, you know, exercises for our programs. And we've had physique competitors come in, and that's how they train with machines. And they can't even perform a standing yeah. full overhead press. Justin has to prime them for yeah, 20 I minutes. 65, 70 year old guys that can press better than these guys. So, yeah. And yeah. they can't because they never do. They always use a machine. Right. So yeah. like, just, I don't know about you, but it's just the patterns they created. I'm not so. trying to lose the ability to lift something over my head straight and, and squat yeah. down on the toilet. <laughs> it's funny. Cause I'm not there yet. You know, like I haven't graduated to the part where I'm thinking about functionality and longevity, Yeah, mm -hmm. but Adam's point, I think really drives it home for me in terms of how we, changed the game for himself stuff so. bro you're 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 in the same place as i was I, I, like literally that's how i i thought because and i thought the same way i did not give a shit about i wasn't talking yeah. about i wasn't talking about functional stuff because i didn't have all kinds of pain i wasn't talking about performance i didn't give a shit about how much i did i just want to look fucking good bro just wanted to look <laughs> and i and i yeah but i'm sure i'll get there because honestly i've will. been doing this for so long and i see myself as sal says as a, a fitness fanatic and so I'm sure at some point I will graduate to exactly what you guys are talking about. You will. Yeah, you you, yeah. you know what? You, you will because father time is undefeated and eventually you will We're have to. trying to be the voice of reason for you. That's yeah, all. Yeah. Yeah. Are, do you have any of our programs, Casey? Maybe I can send you a program and you can fire that stupid coach. <laughs> oh my God. I do not. I do not. All right. I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you maps anabolic and I okay. want you to follow the three day a week version on it. And I want you to be consistent with the trigger sessions on the off days. So you are doing something every single day. But the main workouts are three days a week. And I'm looking at you right now and I'm hearing you talk. And I bet you're going to put more muscle on with that program than anything that this guy's written for you. Awesome. And then I would okay, I appreciate it, guys. Go to that. And then I would love to see you do right after that aesthetic and then split. Like that's like the cool, like, like bodybuilding. That's the next lineup. three. Yeah. Bodybuilding lineup for us as far as programming. If I were to progress you and be training you over the next nine months, yeah. it would be run anabolic run aesthetic and then run split. Yeah. We're going to send you anabolic right now. And then make sure when this airs, cause I'm, you know, I'm sure you'll see it, send this to that coach and be like, Hey, if this annoys you, <laughs> you should definitely tag mind pump and try to make the case. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Case. I should I'll do that. By the way, do it, when yeah. I'm running this stuff, am I in a surplus the whole time or you're trying to build? Yeah, yeah, right yeah. now I am. Yeah, I would be in a surplus for most of it. Yeah, I like to interrupt that just like every, I don't know, four to six weeks with like a three-day cut for someone like you. If you're really yeah. trying to build aggressively, then just three days of a low cal, low cal for- Every three, four weeks. Yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah, that's a nice way to interrupt that and then go right back to your bulk. And then at what point do you fully commit to the cut? Uh, uh, well, it depends how, how high you, you're, yeah, you're yeah. going to allow your body fat percentage. And, that's right. Yeah. Uh, keep putting. Okay. Keep, so you're super uncomfortable and you just know it's well, time. I mean, well, it's, you, you can determine that. I don't know if super uncomfortable would be the limit, maybe just uncomfortable, but it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it guys. Thanks so much. You All got right. it, man. Thanks, Thanks Casey. Casey. All right. Gotta be one of the most annoying arguments I've ever heard <laughs> in my life. Like I, I, I hate the like, bro, it's exactly what I said. It's these, it's lazy. And, and you know what? And the reason why I get so these this, buff okay, dudes can't when I got into an argument with Eugene way back when, and this is exactly my argument right here, is okay, he's 36 and I'm, he's probably been lifting for a little while already, is I was the exact same way. I just wanted to look really cool. And so I, I paid attention to all these bodybuilder guys and they basically gave me the free pass that I didn't need to do these hard movements that, I, that were difficult for me that I hated doing because I sucked at them. And mm -hmm. so I was like, hell yeah, I ain't got a squat. I ain't got a deadlift. Why should I over? I'm a bodybuilder. I'm going to do all this. And for years, that's how I trained. And in the real true reason, deep in my core, why I avoided it, it when I when I'm being honest with myself is because it was hard. Yep. And I know as soon as I said that, it resonated with him. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing because you you don't want to do it because you, you suck know, and it's difficult. This just reminds me. This is a long time ago. I was 18 years old trainer, and this is when I first became a trainer. And there was another trainer that worked there, and he was this like really jacked, like a kind of bodybuilder type or whatever. And we were talking about working out, and he was relatively young. He was in his early 20s, and he was talking about how much he could leg press. 
And I said, I bet you, I, we, we had this argument about de squats and deadlift and, and leg press. Cause I remember when I was real young, that group of power lifters took me under the wing and taught me how to squat. Mm -hmm. And so we were having this argument, like, no leg press. And I'm like, no squat, whatever. And I said, I tell you what, let's go and you show me how much you could leg press for five reps. I'll show you what I could squat for five reps. Let's see who gets closer to the other. And then let's switch. Yeah. And let's switch. And uh, needless to say, he hurt himself trying to yeah, squat what course. I squat, what I could squat because he didn't have the the skill. He didn't own it. He couldn't do it. He went down, came up. He's like, I hurt my back. I knew I shouldn't squat. And I remember being like, that's embarrassing. My favorite part of this was that, you know, it, it turns into an ego lift when your point to it being like the leg press being like a super ego. That's lift. come ego on, lift, dude. dude. I've seen guys in there like literally taking every single 45 that they can find. And stack, stacking stacking on their that. girlfriend Just, on there. Like why? And yeah. doing two inch, two inch. Nobody's uh, impressed. Range of motion. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's because it's hard, dude. Yeah. It's because it's hard. And that's the, the main reason why they, they avoid doing it. And Look, listen, I have never ever okay in my career convince somebody to start squatting and deadlifting and then they come back in a year and go like, like that, that, work. that was a waste of my time oh. i should have just never every yeah. single time i've actually convinced someone like this to make the switch commit to it get good at the squat and deadlift come back and tell me how you felt as far yeah. as how much muscle you built you know one it. more point i want to make with this is that machines are not designed for you. They're designed for this average body type and you can adjust the seat and do that kind of stuff, but it's always kind of off. Free weights follow you. Mm -hmm. You could be six, four, you could be four, four. You put a barbell on your back. The barbell is stuck to you and you determine the range of motion. You determine how the bar moves. You get, you go, you're outside of five, nine. If you're six, two, or you're five, two, and you go do uh, exercise on a machine, the adjustments don't really make it that appropriate for you. It's just a fact. So Free weights are just superior. And now cables come close. That's the only machine I'd say that comes close where it can kind of follow the individual. But aside from that, uh, free weights are superior. Now there is value in machines. So I'm not going to sit here and say there's no yeah. value. There's definitely value. <clears throat> But for people who say those well, exercises, deadlifts and squats, don't do them. To the dumb. ego thing, it definitely can get away. Like I was on the other end of that spectrum where it was just like everything was about your PR and like what you could literally sure. lift uh, to to the most extreme and put your body through the grind for that without considering like individual like single joint movements at all. Right. Like we would avoid those. Yeah, so that, that too in. has its own flaws. Totally. It could kick in anywhere. 